Hello, welcome to Accounting Hub. I'm Professor George Scarpin, PhD in Accounting. And our topic today is defining benefit pension plans journal entries. So here we will not be focusing on what is defined benefit pension plans and how do we do our math and so on. Just a very, very brief explanation about that because we have a, a lot of videos about defining benefit pension plan and they are in our video description as well as the Excel file that we will be working with. And guys, subscribe our channel. You will be the first one to know when a new video arrives. And like our Facebook page, Accounting Hub, my Dr. Scarpy. So what do we have here? Components of pension expense. That is our main topic here. How to record it. Service costs, uh, interest, expense, return on plain asset. And this return here, it is uh, the expected return being reflected in pension expense. The difference between actual return and Expected return is gain or losses, and it is accumulated other comprehensive income. Okay, and it is a contract account of pension expense, so it is not a revenue. Prior service costs, when we have changes in our formula, US gap, it is accumulated other comprehensive income. Uh, IFRS, it is a service cost. So, our difference here. Okay, so this is our basic scenario here. Cristiano Ronaldo was hired by Scarpin Corporation at the beginning of 2010, and the pension, pension plan formula is 1.5% times service years, times final year salary. Uh, Ronaldo is expected to retire after 40 years of service with a life expectancy of 20 years after retirement. At the end of uh, 2019, his salary is $100,000. Quite useless information here. Interest rate is 6%. Uh, salary at retirement, $400,000. How do we do that? Uh, use the pension formula to determine the required benefits earned to date. How much he will receive per year after retirement? Find the present value of retirement benefit as of retirement date. So this is a step one. Find the amount he will be receiving per year. Step number two, present value at the retirement date. Step three, present value as, the of, as of the current date here. Okay, so this is our math. Events that might cause change in PBO balance. Service costs. He will be working one additional year. He will receive more at the retirement because the pension formula is based on service years. So this service or this change here, so he will be receiving $5,000 more. So this $5,000 per year more, how much is at the retirement date? How much it's now? So this is the service cost. Interest cost, beginning balance plus uh, interest rate plus this 6% here. So these two we will have every year, every single year we will have it. What else? Prior service costs when we have changes in our pension formula. Instead of 1.5, 1.7. How much is the uh, service cost because of this change? US gap. This difference from 1.5 to 1.7 from the previous balance, that's why prior service costs. It is uh, accumulated other comprehensive income. IFRS, it is a service cost. Gain or losses when we have changes in our estimates. For instance, here, salary instead of for $100,000, $420,000. So here we have a loss here because he will, he will pay more. We can have gains as well. For instance, this gain or losses, gain on plain asset, we also add it on this gain or losses. And it is accumulated other comprehensive income for uh, IFRS and 
US gag. And is not in our laws. We need to amortize it. And the service life, under quote here, is our, our uh, years to retire. And how do we do that? Or when do we do that? When it gets too large. How do we know if it is too large? We compare net gain or loss with 10% of PBO, our liability, or 10% of the plain asset, whichever is higher. So these two numbers here, we call it the corridor. And then we amortize the difference between our net gain and loss and this corridor. And divided by years to retire. And components of the periodic pension expense, service cost, interest cost, expect less expected return on the independent asset, plus amortization of prior service costs, losses on or gains in the PBO, gain or losses in the plain asset. And the plain asset, we have the cash contribution, how much the company pays to the trustee, or to the bank that is managing this plain asset, less payments to retire, reducing plain asset and reducing the PBO. Here we have no cash because the trustee or the bank that will be pay our will be paying our employee. We only recognize the decreasing of plain asset and decreasing of the PBO. So okay, let's go to our Excel file. A comprehensive Excel file here. We have here our three scenarios. The first scenario is only service cost and interest cost. The second scenario, we change our formula so we have a prior service cost. Third scenario, we have the change on estimates. And we have here the pay asset expected return 9%. Actual return 10, so the 1% remaining, gain on pension asset. Cash contribution 20, retired benefits 22. So here we have how to find the pension expense and the open pace of these numbers we have here. And here, prior service cost. Prior service cost here, it is beginning balance. However, what is our journal entry here? That is, sorry, this journal entry here, prior service cost, it is increasing our PBO. So the journal entry is debit, prior service costs, accumulated other comprehensive income, credit is PBO. So here, prior service costs, uh, it is 15, PBO, also 15. So this is the journal entry of prior service costs. How do we do that? We don't have it here. However, we have here our previous balance, our beginning balances. So the beginning balance, they are here. What are our... Journal entry. First of all, pension expense is the uh, the number to balance. So equal sum of our credits less sum of our debits. Nothing so far. Plain assets. So we debit plain asset with our expected return. And then how much is our expected return? So, oh, where is it? Oh, oh, sorry guys. So our expected return, 14 and 400. Uh, we credit here. What do we credit here? We credit the PBO. What is the, what are we crediting on PBO? So let's go back to our PowerPoint. Patient expense, changes in PBO, service cost plus interest cost. So 
service cost plus interest cost. So we credit our PBO here. And here, why we debit plain asset? Because we go back here, less expected return. And amortization of prior service cost. Prior service cost here, how do we amortize it? Prior service cost divided by remaining service life. That is our under quote here, our useful life if we were talking about intangible assets. So prior service cost, the amortization 570. How do we amortize our net loss? We have a beginning balance of net loss here. So we first of all, we need to find our corridor. 10% of beginning balance of PBO, 10% of beginning balance of plain assets. Why it is yellow here? Fulfill. The greatest one is the plain asset. So what is our formula here? 25 less 16. So 25 less 16, we have Nine. Nine divided by 28. It is $321. And then the formula, B14 net loss less the maximum number between PBO and plain asset divided by remaining service life. So our net loss here, our credit, because we are amortizing a debit account, we have it here, 321. However, we find the pension expense, 11, 250. These two numbers here, they match. What else do we have? Uh, plain assets. Plain assets here, the ending balance must be 174, we have here 174.4. It's not balanced. Net loss, net loss 32, 24, not balanced. Prior service cost, it is balanced, we are good. PBO, it is not balanced, we are not good. So, what do we have here? We have a net loss because we have this change in the estimation. So the net loss here, it is loss on PBO, $9,000. So net loss, $9,000 here, PBO, $9,000 here. They are not balanced yet. So let's move on. Plain asset, plain asset is not balanced because we have the uh, unexpected return, the actual less the expected return, 1600. Credit net loss, why the credit is not the net gain? Because we have only one account, net gain or net loss. Here we have a huge net loss and imbalance, so we decrease the net loss. So the net loss here, 32, 32, we are good. So net loss, we are good. Prior service cost, we are good. PBO and plain asset, we are not good. What do we have here now? Uh, let's balance the PBO. What is missing? Retiree benefits. So let's go back to our PowerPoint here. Payments to retirees, it is decreasing on both. So debit PBO, credit plain asset. So here, debit PBO, credit plain asset. 170, we are good. 154, we are not good yet because it is missing the cash contribution. Cash contribution, we are paying it to our plain asset. So we are increasing our plain asset. Debit, plain asset. Credit, cash. And now all our numbers are matching. 
PBO, main asset, net loss, prior service costs, and pension expense. Okay, guys, this is too much. A lot of journal entries here. So watch this video how many times you want or you need. Okay, so thank you so much. If you have questions or comments, leave it here or email me at jscarping at gmail.com. Have a very nice day and God bless you.